Hi, my name is Wilnan Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with Phoenix's latest celebrity artist, Brian Nash. Brian is an award-winning conductor, musical director, pianist, and producer. He does it all. He's been performing professionally since he was a kid. He auditioned as a kid for and was accepted to the American Boy Choir. The following two years, he spent performing across the country and around the world, including Taiwan, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Canada, and here in the US at Lincoln Center in Carnegie Hall. Upon graduation from Interlochen with a performance vocal degree, Brian moved to the East Coast to attend the Boston Conservatory, where he would be majoring in opera performance. It was while performing and studying at BOCO that Brian continued to find work music directing shows and acting and began his first foray into the world of piano bars. When he moved to New York City, he started working immediately. As a producer, he produced the off-Broadway hits, Silence the Musical and Bear. As a musical director, he musical directed the pre-Broadway engagements of Beaches, classic, classic stage companies, Mother Courage and Her Children, with music by Duncan Sheik, the last five years at the Actors Theater of Louisville and the Oslo Rep, to name a few. And as musical director, he's worked with the best of the best. Deborah Cox, Jennifer Holliday, Tony Award winners, Lena Hall and Laura Benanti, to name a few. And now, here's my interview with the great Brian J. Nash. Hi, Brian, how are you? Hi, Will, how are you, love? What's happening? It's so good to see you, my friend. Where are you at? I'm I'm home. I'm in Harlem. I'm in New York, living all of my foreign dreams. <laughs> so you went to Boston Conservatory, and then when yeah. you graduated, you soon thereafter moved to New York and started working right away. Yeah, um, I was in I was in a rock band in Boston as well, and it was the band that moved to New York. Oh, uh, so I was playing for Justin Tranter, who now is a songwriter for literally everyone. Um, but yeah, so we all moved to New York. I wasn't going to audition for theater. I wasn't going to audition for opera. Uh, I wasn't going to play anything else. And, uh, you know, we were playing the CBGB circuit and doing that whole shtick. And uh, I eventually realized I needed to eat. So <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I started playing in clubs in New York pretty soon thereafter in music directing shows. Well, you know, not in addition to not only playing clubs and music directing shows, you, I mean, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Yeah, sure. You you went on to produce two shows off Broadway, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I produced uh, Silence the Musical, which is a musical version of Silence of the Lambs. I saw it and it was uh, hilarious. It's so dumb. It makes me so happy. <laughs> um, yeah. We just, I found some songs online that had been circulating and wrote to the composers. It was like, is this an actual thing? And it was not yet. And so then we made it a thing. And then it ran uh, off Broadway for three years. So that was great. Um, and I uh, associate produced um, the revival of a rock musical called Bear that had run off Broadway like in 2003. And we did it, was that 2011, I think? Wow. I wow. Yeah. Well, well, listen, I mean, that's amazing. And also what's amazing, you've musical directed some pre-Broadway engagements of some yeah. show. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I, lo I love working with artists and like developing their pieces. That's really, especially when I'm working on a musical, that's what I love doing, that kind of uh, crafting in the room, figuring out how each moment works um, and making that come to life. Um, I did, uh, there's a musical version of the, it's actually of the novel Beaches mm. uh, on which the film was based. Mm. Uh, but it was written by uh, Iris Rainer Dart who wrote the novel. Um, so we did, uh, we did a pre-Broadway run with, uh, the brilliant Shoshana Bean, uh, in the Bette Midler role, um, and Whitney Basher and the Barbara Hershey role. Um, and that was, it was madness and so fun. And cause we were really building it from the ground up and figuring out how that worked. And I adore that kind of stuff. That's amazing. Well, listen, I've been very fortunate as a director to work with you on some concert work, but just being in the room with mm -hmm. you, Brian, I, 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 I felt like at times... We were old school director and musical director in the fifties, you know, creating oh. the show from the with 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 the, with this like pretending literally it's, that, that that it was a theater piece. Mm -hmm. And I think what you do, well, it's not. I think I know you bring your knowledge from this 
operatic singing since you were a kid, to this producerial mind, to this pianist who obviously trained classically, but has this pop rock music theater sensibility. And what you do that is so cool is you bring your full self in bliss to the table in whatever the assignment is. And yeah, I can only imagine A, what an app like Phoenix would do for someone like you who is oh, yeah. already well known in New York City and across the country and frankly, in some parts of the world because you travel a lot, but to, to be able to have other people in other countries get to know you as well. Oh, I mean, it's it's an incredible opportunity. And I love, like, part of what I love doing is getting to travel so much. I mean, I'm on the road, you know, half the year at least. I was, I was in Australia right before the pandemic hit. I'm like, I should have stayed! Um, <laughs> But, you know, that happens. Um, I've been there a lot in the last couple of years. And I'm like, I could do this. This is amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, I love going around the world. And I love experiencing, you know, different cultures and the way different audiences react. And uh, part of what I love about performing uh, when I'm performing, like, as myself is kind of soaking up the different energies of audiences and feeling that, you know, as I go around the world, kind of what resonates in different places is mm. incredible. Um, and that's part of what's been good about this last year. I mean, that's right. one of the things um, in these quote unquote trouble times um, has been to, since everything has moved online, I'm able to perform for, you know, everyone in Australia and in Chicago and in LA and, you know, randomly in South America and, uh, a bunch of the Brits were on the other night and it's been it's been really remarkable so well you bring up a great point that whole notion of when we've had this time to kind of look within really realizing the universality of finding hope in finding light in the darkness and in our case right as artists music is a tool of universal language mm -hmm. and um you do it brilliantly, my friend. I want to button, though, before we leave today, you know, just some of the artists that you've gotten to work with. I, I okay. mean, amazing, amazing, amazing list of artists. Do you have one or two that you just, I mean, not to, you know, leave anyone out, but that you absolutely <laughs> love? Working? I mean, kind of the, the parallel, and there are like three who are kind of, you know, the trifecta of like, these are very different artists in very different capacities. Um, I've been working for, since 2017 with the brilliant Jennifer Holiday. Um, wow. She's incredible. She's always, I, I found recently, I just moved a program from going to go see her do a talk at Berkeley in Boston uh, when I was there and she signed my, my little program and I was so delighted. Um, and I've been, you know, we just did uh, the Sydney Cabaret Festival um, last in 2019 um, and have been kind of going all over the place performing. That voice is insane. And mm -hmm. just to sit at a, sit at a piano with, a, with an orchestra in front of you and play those first few notes of And I'm Telling You I'm Not Going and hearing that voice start into that song and just the thrill that goes to the audience is Unbelievable. Audience members who don't know Jennifer Holiday obviously won her Tony Award amidst all of the awards, including the Grammy, mm -hmm. as Effie White in the original Broadway production of Dream Girls. That, yep. that's, that's amazing. Okay, it's who else? Incredible. Um, Deborah Cox. Uh, oh, wow. You know, R&B dance artist Deborah Cox, just a legend. And that is like the other side of things where it's just like, you know, thumping and she's singing her head off and the audience is on their feet and it's just the energy of of working with her is unreal uh wow. she also just did the um the tour of the bodyguard playing the win houston role mm -hmm. um and before she booked that we were doing some shows and she was just kind of messing around with singing some of the whitney material and it's like this has to happen wow the, um, universe, the universe was aligning it was yeah it was it's been incredible and she's just such a sweetheart it's just so fun uh and kind of the other like the full pop end um i've been playing with andy bell uh the lead singer of erasure uh wow. for you know years uh again 2019 i was in the uk every weekend playing these like 25,000 person festivals with him 
Um, and just like living all of your 80s synth pop dreams. It was, um, yeah. That's amazing, my friend. I mean, you literally have done it all. We have already gone over, but I don't care. I'm going to <laughs> figure something Edit like out. crazy. But um, I am going to say this so that I know what's it, so I can edit up this portion is, um, well, Brian, thank you so much for joining me today and speaking with me about your amazing career. And I'm so excited about the endless possibilities now that you're a part of the Phoenix family. I'm so excited to join you guys. This it's going to be an incredible, incredible opportunity. So thank you so much for having me. It's so good to see you. Good to see you too, Brian. Bye. See you soon. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.